Sydney, the capital of New South Wales, houses a population of over one and a quarter millions, a third of whom daily cross the harbour to their homes. The bridging of these beautiful waters was therefore inevitable. Circular Quay, typical of the hustle and the bustle of seething Sydney, was before the bridge was built the sole point of arrival and the departure for all North Shore. How the ferry passengers pour in, eager to reach the comfort of their homes after the day's hard toil in the city. The ferries, for all their quaint charm, belong to the past. The old order changes, and so arises the steel colossus of the new age, Sydney's Harbour Bridge stretching from Milson's Point on the North Shore to Dawes Point, a span of 1,650 feet. The largest bridge in the world, containing 52,300 tons of steel. Not only steel, the quarries of Maruya, 170 miles away, were specially opened and equipped to supply stone for the approaches, and the 20,000 cubic yards of granite required for the piers and the pylons. Blocks of stone were dressed and effaced before shipment to Sydney, all ready to slip into their positions in the great structure. Giant scoops snatch up broken granite for the concrete work, which required 1,200,000 bags of mint and 120,000 cubic yards of sand. 1,000 men were employed building the bridge. All doubts whether Australians were equal to the task were soon dispelled. The Australians proved as skilled tradesmen as any I had experience with in Britain or America, said Mr. Lawrence Ennis, Director of Construction for the British contractors, Dorman Long and the company. These men handled members of a size and weight never before contemplated in engineering surmounting new difficulties one by one as they arose. Every girder slipped easily into its position in the vast web of steel. The bridge, the construction cost of which was £6,250,000, involved a total outlay including resumptions of about £10 million. It took six years to build, but it represented an idea which first shaped itself as long ago as 1815. Miracles were wrought daily in the fabrication shop on the North Shore by giant milling and planing machines. Each of the four main bearings consisted of an assembly of steel castings and forgings weighing 296 tons. Creeper cranes of uncanny accuracy and a gigantic strength set a stone on stone, steel to steel. The masters of the great machines direct a girder into position. More than five million rivets were driven into the structure. For six years, morning, noon and night, the bridge was a constant topic of ferryboat conversation. The two half arches growing together from shore to shore were watched like the delicate tendrils of a hothouse plant. Neither the vast bulk looming over Kiribilly Point nor the distant spectacle of the bridge's simple beauty gives much hint of the manifold complexity of cords, cross girders and cables. The interest of the crowd increased daily as the new wonder evolved. Foot by foot, the two half arches crept towards each other. Each half arch anchored back in a jungle of steel ropes. Every one of these cables comprises 217 wires 
and weighs eight and a half tons. Sydney cheered wildly when on August the 19th, 1930, after months of tension, the arch was closed. They met to a fraction. The joined plate was the symbolical last link. Dr. Bradfield, the chief engineer for the bridge, and Mr. Ennis anxiously inspect the joint. Hangers up to 193 feet long support the broad decking. The approaches to the bridge on each shore were rapidly completed. Saturday, March the 19th, 1932, was Sydney's Red Letter Day. With pomp and a pageantry such as had never before been seen in the state, with a blare of trumpets, sirens and whistles, with rockets and ribbons, and the rolling thunder of artillery, the bridge was officially declared open. Huge steamers, gay yachts, and the sprightly speedboats saluted the bridge from beneath. The dream was realized at last, and the North Shore entered into its heritage as the Brooklyn of the South Seas. Sydney rightly claims the greatest and heaviest arch-type bridge in the world. Although 25 inches shorter than the Kill Van Cull Bridge, New York, it is 160 feet wide as against the Kill Van Cull's 90 feet, and its arch alone contains 37,000 tons of steel as against the Kill Van Cull's 16,000 tons. It has a higher clearance than any bridge except the George Washington Suspension Bridge at New York. Its maximum hourly capacity is 128 electric trains, 6,000 vehicles in each direction, and 40,000 pedestrians. Enhancing the natural beauty of Sydney Harbour, it stands as an arch of triumph of British engineering and of Australian enterprise and industry.